I'm Angela Ward. My mission is to make sure that we put money into the hands of Georgians. And I'm very skeptical of any idea that doesn't achieve that purpose. I'm bringing you inside access to innovators and thought leaders that are shaping our area. It's politically correct. Two is marketing correct. Bridging more digital platforms, virtualization, um, school system. Asking questions that put issues first and politics second. The African American community has been particularly hard hit by COVID-19. Some people do it for health, some people do it for the environment, uh, some people do it for the animals. Whatever your reasoning is, just make sure it's something real to you. This is The Game Changers. Thank you everyone for joining us on The Game Changers with Angela Ward. I'm so honored to be here with you, Ambassador Young and Reverend Jackson, and also former Mayor candidate Kevin Bussey. I just really want to, you know, we are here at election time and it, everyone is just really excited. We're, we're really down to uh, a matter of days right now. And I, I want to really talk about the voting. Um, how do you feel um, with the current voting um, ballots as of right now uh, with the direction of voting and, and getting everyone out to vote? Reverend Jackson, do you feel that uh, mail-in ballots would be very um, impactful for the election? Well, they're, they're working six states for that little well, I'm a hit. I think that Trump is trying to discredit the election because he really wants to create a, a calamity at the polls. Uh, he's doing it unusually. He's trying to hang on to power, even though he's about to lose it. So I think we should focus on the census and voting. It may be mail in, it may be come to the polls, but don't, don't miss this moment in history. Right. Do you, um, Kevin, how do you feel? I know you want to ask about how effective it will be. Yeah, coming from you guys, uh, being um, pillars of our, our society, um, of our culture, how do you guys feel that, do you feel that it's going to be effective with the mail-in ballots? No, let me say, I'm not worried about the shenanigans that they're going to try to pull. I think we've got enough warning on that. I think the one thing we have to concentrate on is getting as many people to the polls as possible, as early as possible. Absolutely. And I went, I, in fact, I, I, I just came from uh, voting for a special election we have here uh, just a minute ago, just before I came here. and. Uh, we're electing somebody to replace John Lewis till the end of this term. Uh, and it, it's, there's a wonderful setup there that can handle a lot of people. Uh, we have opened up the gymnasium. I mean, the, uh, the stadium for State Farm Arena is going to be a voting place. Uh, I saw that the Houston Rockets uh, have uh, developed a drive-by voting right. registration uh, in Houston. And I think that, that all of the fuss has turned on our folk, and we just have to keep them turned on and don't let them get discouraged. So the counting is another issue. Uh, but if they don't, if, if, the way to deal with the count is to have an, such a large lead in early voting and in mail, get the mail-in voting quickly. Right, it's so important to get. In many places, they, they start counting the mail-in votes when they come in. Right. And so you, you, the thing we don't want is we don't want votes coming in at the last minute. We right. ought to try to have this election decided in October. Right. That I know. It'd um, be such a large margin and such a big turnout that we don't even have to wait till election day. That's right. I know um, comedian Ricky Smiley, I know that they are getting ready to, um, I, I believe starting in October, to really make an impact with um, driving around Florida. 
Do you feel that the state of Florida, would that be a, a really major impact on the election? The state of Florida could, could decide the election, especially since they're going to put up money to let fel fel former convicted felons reactivate yeah. their vote by paying off all of their court costs. And I think that's one thing we can be grateful to Bloomberg for. Uh, if he didn't do anything else, uh, Fair enough. he may have decided Florida for us. Wow. And Reverend Jackson, how do you feel as far as in, you know, with the state of Georgia, you know, they it's a huge race with Senator Perdue, um, with um, uh, Raphael, Senator, uh, uh, Reverend Warnock. Do you feel that uh, Warnock will really, you know, push over with Senator Perdue and um, Lawfler? Let me say, first of all, you must identify your interest in, in vote. For example, 18 years in vote, now vote. All high things and residents vote. Move why? To get Pell Grants, scholarships, to avoid the war, because the war is who's going, 1891. College student loan debt reduction. So if, if we identify the reasons to vote, bottom up, not just top down, as Andy said, we, we have so many votes until, the, until they, they, can't, they can't steal enough. Let me ask you this. Yes, sir. I, I couldn't hear Reverend Jackson very well, but I, I wanted to put in this that Warnock could win this if we had Lieberman and the, the two Democrats running that can't win. They have not raised enough money to run a respectable campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, and one of them is black and uh, the other is the son of a former Senator Lieberman. Now, on the front page of the Atlanta paper today, it said people are charging that Lieberman is blocking uh, the election of a Democrat. And so there's pressure on him to drop out now. If we could get the other black candidate to drop out, Warnock has a very good campaign. And if he can get him in a runoff and have this landslide, we can make him a senator. Right. And as I just remember, seen... see, everybody wrote off Georgia when Clinton was running. Yes. And we called Clinton and he got down to Georgia. We had a rally with about 25,000 people that Hank Aaron helped us put together. And nobody wanted him to Clinton to come to Georgia. <clears throat> but because of Hank Hank Aaron, he came to Georgia. <clears throat> we won Georgia by 11,000 votes. And we had 25,000 people in that stadium uh, for his victory, wow. I mean, for his presence. And if he had not come to Georgia and had not won Georgia, he would not have been president. Wow. So I think. You can never tell about Georgia. I only got elected, it was a pouring down rain, but I got elected because we had a 74% turnout of black voters in a pouring down rain all day and all night. And when, when I saw people coming out, you know, <clears throat> y'all black women don't like to get wet. <laughs> Uh, but they stood. They stood up in the rain, and they they they. Uh, but but that that changed the history of Georgia, because the next year I was able to take my campaign, and put it into Maynard's campaign, and we elected Maynard mayor, and we've had six black mayors, you know, in a row now. But if it hadn't been for that one, seventy four percent turnout. None of that could have happened. Now, no, um, and, and, Mr. Bussy. Angela, 
Yes, sir. Shouldn't it be next about 112,000 votes less than one vote per second? Uh, a call to be forced by a million five. Margins matter in these big elections. Features and new, new race voters. There's, there's a new Georgia that, that can win this campaign for one off. I know there were some issues, I know, during Kevin Bussey's um, run. Kevin, would you like to explain about some of our voters here, you know, in South Georgia, that it's, it's really hard. What do you recommend? Um, and Kevin, would you like to, to, to explain your issues that you had with voters? Uh, sure. Uh, I was actually going to ask uh, Ambassador Young and Reverend Jackson the same. Um, because you guys have gone through the civil rights movement, the, the era of voting, how do we get, as uh, Congress Dunn Lewis would say, how do we get our young uh, African American uh, generation, uh, young generation out there to get into some good trouble, uh, as John Lewis would say? One thing I, again, I've I've asked young people uh, when Treatment Martin was, uh, the, the trial came up. How many of you would like to uh, vote and change? I'm not into voting this city as well. Let's sit on the jury. Only those who vote can sit on the jury. So young people have, have can sit on the jury. Power. So I think it's all about convincing that they have empowerment to vote. I, I was about your age when and and was an old man. I used to run around behind and then that's how I got inspired. <laughs> <laughs> well, see, that's, I, I, I guess that's one of my bigger issues is that we're standing on the shoulders, individuals like myself, um, we're standing on the shoulders of guys like you, you know, you ran for president, uh, you were the mayor in, in Atlanta. Uh, so our political aspirations are because of you guys, but I guess there's a great area for the generation, um, the millennial generation, or not the millennial, uh, generation Y. Uh, I believe that there's a disconnect. I don't know if they have anybody that they can look up to, somebody that they can say, hey, I want to take the mental on and, and I want to move forward and get into some good trouble. So that's where that gray area is. And I think we need to try to find a way to fill that gap. Well, and, and, and the, 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 when the police shot, shot the brother in the back in Atlanta, Paul Howell indicted him in three days. That's the vote for you. They got killed by uh, George Floyd. Uh, would have walked away, except when uh, the the Attorney General Keith Ellison took over. First time a, a white man died in the history of Minnesota. So voting voting matters. That's when you, right. When you're a judge, a prosecutor, it matters. And you Mr. Know, Young, let me say, Brother Bussy. Yes, sir. We got a ban. Just a bunch of high school kids that made a band. We got a flatbed truck, just a big truck. Put the band on the truck. I got on the truck. We had people hanging on all over the truck. And we would drive in through the black communities, particularly just around after the sun went and started going down. And we'd stop on a corner. And everybody would come and come out of the house. We'd have about a five or ten minute street dance, and you'd have to give your speech and tell them to get out to vote, and then drive slowly on down to the next neighborhood and stop. Wow! But you gotta. I mean, we, we gotta do it our way. We can't just knock on doors. People aren't gonna let you on the, in the door in this coronavirus. That's right. But they will look out that door and they will dance on their front steps if you got a good piece of music going. That's right. Wow. Now these are old folks, so you got to go back to the rock and roll area. They're not going they they they're not into rap. <laughs> Yet I mean and, and I don't know how to dance to rap music, but everybody knows how to dance to Gladys Knight and the, the four tops and sunny uh, well you you know who that's right gotcha. yes sir I, I think that's that's great and that sound advice profound advice uh we have to meet them out there get boots on the ground and just, we have to touch the, bases with them the best we can doing this COVID. 
That's right. And with um, in in my closing, with the passing of um, Ginsburg, how do you guys feel um, with President Trump? You know, wanting to move forward with picking, you know, someone for the courts. You know, I, I've seen so much of her lately as a kind of rock star, but November the tenth, affordable health care will come up for voting in the court. In the hill of affordable health care, 26 million people fall, more white than black. So it's not just her, she's she, she standing between us in life and death. And I think that's to me, that's, uh, uh, that's why McConnell is such a big deal to us. Right. But you know, you have to remember that Trump appointed e even the two people that Trump appointed to the court did not vote, I mean, voted to make him expose his taxes. So true. the fact that we have a woman on the court uh, that Trump appoints, I, I just can't believe that a woman who went to Notre Dame and who taught at Notre Dame, um, Father Hesburgh was with us in the movement in the 60s. And almost everybody I've worked with coming out of Notre Dame has been pretty good people. So he might appoint her, but I don't know. Once she gets appointed, she's on her own. And then I don't know that the lady down there from Cuba, she's right. trying to get away from Castro. Trump is trying to be a Castro here. Mm. And so I just don't know that I, I don't want to worry about what he does. Right. The, he is right now in real trouble and I'm going to leave him to the Lord, mm -hmm. but we got to get our people believing that this country as bad as it is, is still better than any place I've ever been. And when people ask me, where would I rather live than here? I America. said, you know, I, I've been to 152 countries. My, wow. And I loved them all. But when it comes to picking a place to live, I'm, I'm, I'm where I'm supposed to be. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, you I guys. Um, um, now, if, it gets, if, it gets too, if it gets too tough in Atlanta, and you the mayor down in Valdosta, I might come back down there. <laughs> come on, you you have you both have to come visit. You we're, both we're have to come you down open to South Georgia. Well, thank you so much. It's such an honor to have you guys on. I I truly appreciate it. Um, it's 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 amazing, and and to have you know a young black man on, you know, with I know that the Trump administration is really trying to. Um, catered to uh, black people right now. And I believe they're in Atlanta um, today, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. And it, it was just really important for me to, you know, to have a young black male on with two of the greats, um, you know, in our civil You're rights. You're we're not young? No. <laughs> <laughs> go go ahead and get an ambassador, y'all. <laughs> I'm not saying That's that. All right. Though. <laughs> no, it's just, it's truly an honor, seriously. But I appreciate you and thank you for all that you are continuing to do. Reverend Jackson, I see you on the news all the time. I just seen you up there with um, George Floyd, um, his, um, the people that were protesting for him. And I see you guys all the time. It's just, it's just an honor and I truly appreciate that. And, and thank you for coming on the Game Changers.